Then you 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 have your struggles too. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. Have your struggles. You yeah. Have, you, unfortunately, the cancer came. The cancer came in two thousand and nine. And uh, that was in January 2009. And I was still with part of it in December 2009. So it was a kind of a wipeout. But I had, I suppose, my oncologist did say to me, I said to him one time, I think I have had every um, side effect in the book. And he shook his head and he said, pretty much. But, he said, you have a positive approach to life, that has been a great help, and you've managed to come through. And one time when I had a, a chest infection, I thought that was gone to the lung. He said, no, this is a right lung infection, it's not cancer, and we'll get through this now with antibiotics. So I want to assure you that that's... And I said, okay, that's fine, we'll manage. Well, so I had a lot of support as well, Peter. That sounds like a miracle. You were able to, you know, fight it and, you know, you came through it. Was it, you thought about strength and confidence from the Brigidine sister. Strength so, and uh, gentleness. Uh, yeah, that mm. um, ability to say, okay, I will, I will overcome this. Was it something that you got from the formation stage, something that has been with you? Because when I see you then, you know, you always have, I, I look at seeing other people and seeing you and seeing the strength with which you confronted the cancer, you know. Yeah. I, th well. I think it was a miracle mm. and it was amazing. Mm. It's, it's, ah, yes, it was. It miracle. was. Because there are a lot of, if, if they tell people that you fought cancer, you had cancer and you are alive like this, people who don't believe. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Well, I was one of the lucky ones, Peter. I was one of the lucky ones. I was not presenting with anything. And I um, I responded to an invitation to participate in a bowel screening test. And it was before I got it in, in December. And I was going to Swaziland uh, for a, a short, it was only a 10-day visit to Swaziland. And it had to do with my work, too. And um, so I said, I'll put that aside and I'll tend to it when I come back. I came back and I had another letter asking me if I were going to respond because they had sent me the kit that you, you use, you see. So straight away, I did it. I responded. And I even delivered it personally myself to the laboratory in Tala. And I went to my GP. I had to... Um, um, I'd already got a heart condition since 2006. So um, I went to the GP to re renew my um, prescription. And I said to him, um, I just uh, got a call from, I got a, an invitation to participate in a bowel screening test in Tala Hospital. I was wondering how uh, they had got all my data. And he said, oh, Professor O'Moron is is pioneering that he's he's up, upping that and he said he came to visit us in the in the various um you know set clinics here in tala and he said it's it's for a certain age group between 59 and 69 or something like that so he said you came into that category so he took no you know that that's how that but he said it's voluntary you don't have to and I said, oh, I've done it. I, I think it's a great idea. And I've already left up my, my samples, left in my samples. Now, at that stage, I wasn't um, thinking of anything. I knew I had um, atrial fibrillation, which was an irregular heartbeat. That was being taken care of with the medication. But um, then, would you believe it, in, in uh, the end of December, before Christmas, I got the call to say that there was uh, blood in the stools and that I would be programmed for a colonoscopy on the 3rd of January. So the 3rd of January, I went in the 14th of January, I was operated on, on the 23rd of January. And I didn't know until the 14th, the 15th of January, what I really did have. 
My sister, her antenna went up and she said, I don't think this is good news for Kay, but she's not thinking about that way herself, so I'm not going to say anything. And then she rang me from, from when I was actually in the um, uh, consultation room with the, with the, um, with the doctor. And uh, I said to him, I said, this is my sister calling me from, from, from Windsor, from London. And he said, well, talk to her, he said, and I'll go out, I'll be back in a minute. And I said, they're telling me, I, they're admitting me, I have to be tonight. And um, so, and she said, what is your result? And I said, I've asked him about it. He said, I'm not get, getting it until tomorrow. Professor O'Moran will be around tomorrow and he'll give me everything. My niece came in, that girl there, came in to visit me that night when she heard I was in the A&E and she brought me in a book, Eat, Love, Pray. And um, I was, I got the last bed in the, um, in the A&E, the last bed and on a trolley. And so I wasn't sick. So I walked up and down and I talked to people and there was a lady there who was really sick. So I looked after her for a bit and then I put, plugged in my phone to get it, you know, so that I'd have, have uh, uh, credit on it. And um, uh, so I got the bed then about 11.30. My, my niece stayed with me until about 11.30 and then she said, well, now that you've got the bed, she said, I'll be off. And I said, look, child, see you tomorrow, whatever. At that stage now, I wasn't able to say to her what, but she um, didn't, you know, there was no big deal about it. She just, come, you know, stayed with me. But um, I just thought, her cancer, she didn't survive it. And she was only 40. I was at a better stage, maybe, or at a better chance of, it was a different type, you know. I or just, you just struggled through the treatment and all. Treatment, and then I had a stoma bag, and I had that for nine months until eventually I got it um, longer than nine months, actually, nearly a year. And um, that was um, reversed then, I had the reversal. I had that done over in, the, in uh, the Beacon Hospital. And I had another hemorrhage over there. I came out, I was back in Dartmouth Road at the time, and then I had to go back in again. I had another hemorrhage and so it was ongoing for quite a while then I had the chemo I started chemo and so uh, I did say to the doctor that my aunt was celebrating her 90th birthday in Scotland and I'd like to have go over to it and well, could he delay the chemo and give me the so the, the nun, sisters thought it was a marathon for me to be doing this but I wanted to do it for her you know she was such a great lady and um, uh, so I did and you know I took care of myself other when I come back then he st we started the chemo and that's when I had a really tough time with chemo however you know I'm I'm here to tell the tale and the other thing is Peter that I'm living with the possibility that maybe it will return. Something might will, might will. It's okay. It's okay. I've had a good lease of life. And it's all. So, what, what the, in the course of the treatment, what were you feeling knowing that anything could happen? It could be the end. Well, um, I did say to, I did say to, to Patricia, you know, I said, I just want to say that if this is what's the, going to be the end for me, I just want you to know that it's been a good life. I've enjoyed it. I'm happy with it. And it's okay. It's okay. And she said, okay, we're not going to, you know. And I said, oh, I'll try. I'm going to fight it. But I'm just, I just want to get that out of my head anyway to say you it to you. You were just being realistic. I was just being realistic about it. But um, there was another sister whom I knew from Tala. Sister, um, uh, who uh, Sarah was her name, and she had 
something similar, but not similar because no two patients have the same surgery. Um, but she was in James's. She had her surgery in James's. And we used to meet because we, we were going. Now, I was having it in Tala, but I knew she had had. And we used to meet to socially, you know. She was in Dar She came to Dartmouth Road. Um, the sisters of um, uh, Daughters of Charity have a house there. And we were. I was in Dartmouth Road at the time. So I used to meet her there, go for walks and that. And after her, I would be talking about my chemo experience. And I would be sick and all the rest of it. But her, my, my, um, my conversation with her was more hopeful, I thought. She was telling me it didn't work. They were trying something else. And so there were, until eventually, she said to me, I'm not in a good space now, okay? And eventually she went out to Dunleary. They have a house out there, and it's where they have a house, um, um, nursing home as well. So I used to go out to visit her there, and I visited her up to the last and she used to come out for a walk until she wasn't able anymore. And she said, this is the end for me. So I know how lucky I am. Now, I was with another lady, and I met her daughter about two months ago. And I inquired for her mother because I had met her at different times. And she said, oh, she said, mom died, you know, uh, before Christmas. Yeah, so you were so lucky. I was just here one to of tell the lucky story. Ones. I was lucky. So how do you feel now? Are you happy that you survived it? Oh yes, absolutely. I feel I got a new lease of life. And when they asked me, Professor O'Moran actually invited me to talk to a group of physicians uh, in um, the College of Surgeons. And um, my niece came with me to that as well. She was working up here. And I invited her, I said, look, would you ever just come with me? I don't want to go on my own. And uh, when I was going, she said to me, what are you going to be doing, you know? And I said, I'm just going to be sharing my story with her. She said, I noticed you don't have a note or a thing in your hand. And I said, no, I, I'm, it's not that type of thing. It's you lived through it. I'm so just li living, just understand. telling the story for what it was. You, you, you came to... Perot Foundation um, launched on our uh, cancer awareness. Uh, That's right. You, you yeah. spoke there too. Yeah, I did. So you don't need a note. And I, I um, spoke to the nurses in Tala and that. After this one now, the extraordinary thing about the one in the College of Surgeons was that um, the, the professor had given his whole thing on the graves. He was getting an award. I didn't know that until the actual night. And then he told me that Graves was, was the first um, physician to introduce bedside manner into, uh, into the medical world, you know. So he said he, since that he likes to have a patient of his to uh, talk about her experience or his experience. So he said I've asked Sister Kay Mulhall to do that. Next thing my picture flashed up on the <laughs> On the board, and I said to I said to my niece, God, I said I don't know what. <laughs> I didn't realize what it was coming to. She said neither did I. But anyhow, okay, you're okay. Go ahead. And um, so at the end, I thanked them for their. I thanked their profession. I said, what I can say is that I am hugely grateful for the work of medicine, for what it does for people. For me, it has given me a new lease of life. And so I say, I congratulate you all. I congratulate your vocation as medics, as, as professors, as, as specialists and as consultants. Uh, I said, um, I think, um, where would we be without you? There was a cheese and wine afterwards, and so people came, wanted to come and talk to me. You know, uh, doctors from, consultants from Kildare, from Kilkenny, from Cork, from Kerry, from Donegal. 
I couldn't believe it was an eye opener to me that they were all there. But the the overriding thing of all that they said was, we don't often get a thanks like that. Well, I said, I am aware of the, my own hospital where I was a patient in Tala. I said, gets bad press at times. But I said, for me, I couldn't. They have done I, an amazing job. They've done an amazing job.